three, two, one. Hey guys, it's Chris and Fur, and we're back for another Tackle Talk Thursday. Uh, I'm gonna readjust the camera real quick. I just realized it was twisted. There you go. Look at that editing magic right there, guys. That was high tech, wasn't it? Um, we are uh, on our third week of our Monday night tournament series. It's a local lake right down the road. You guys have seen a bunch of it. I mentioned that. Um, we took a different approach on this last one. The week before, if you look back to the last Tackle Talk, uh, we were using, I call them swing football heads or swing head. Um, just think of like a football headed jig and it, it articulates and moves around. Six Sense has it. I know Greg Hackney has his own series with Strike King. Uh, I believe Gamakatsu has one. Um, it just adds for a lot better action. We were using that on a Sixth Sense Ridgeworm in Red Bug, uh, or June Bug Red. I can't remember how they list it. Um, I did good. I lost a giant. I just, thanks for reminding myself, I guess. But uh, that cost us some money. And then last, or this past Monday, it, it, it started kind of slow. Uh, we started out working Golden Shiner Chatterbaits, of course. You're never not going to see me try one of them now, um, especially after I caught a big one on one. I'll never not throw one. Um, Fur was throwing a Chatterbait. I was working the Florida Staple, baby. June Buck Red. <laughs> I mean, if you come to Florida without anything June Bug Red, you might as well pack your bags and head back up. Because uh, this is on a, a Guggen Black go to. It's a 7.3, medium heavy. Uh, I've got f uh, 16 pound Sunline Fluoro. Uh, it's FC Sniper on there, 16 pound. Uh, 151 XG. Um, I like to have an 8 to 1 uh, or even faster if you happen to find anything faster. Um, this is just your typical Corrado DC. I love my Corrados whether they're the MGLs or the DCs. Um, this is on a quarter ounce weight. A lot of guys throw a 3 16th. I put a quarter on because I never know if I'm gonna be fishing in 20 feet of water or two feet of water or less. So I just leave a quarter. I always pin them. Some guys don't. That's just me. Find your own groove. It might work for you. We fish a ton of heavy, heavy, heavy cover down here. Um, and you never know, every now and then I might take this smaller one off throw it on a magnum speed worm and throw it over deep brush piles and just kind of crank it bumping the the brush as i'm pulling through and this is just a versatile bait night day doesn't matter it's just it works i've even fished it in clear water lakes like lake yale um some of you guys are familiar with yale especially if you're around the chain the, the harris chain um i i'll even throw that in yale and yale is a pretty darn clear lake so um I caught two tiny little runts just to get everything going. Um, fur missed a fish. I think, oh, and I caught a jack, well, uh, pickerel. Again, um, you guys will always hear me call pickerel jacks. I, that's just the name, that's how I learned them. I like a weird southern thing, just like everybody else in the world calls them crappie. We call them specks or speckled perch. Um, but anyways, we did that. We stayed up shallow. Um, actually, we hit the brush pile first. And uh, we didn't, I didn't get a bite, did you? No. no, we didn't get it. Plus, I figured out my marker on GPS was off by like 50 feet. I have no idea how in the world I pulled that off. We circled that bad boy for four <laughs> times, I think. Yeah. I burned probably 15 minutes. It's shame on me. It's only a three and a half hour tournament. You have not a single second to spare. And here I am just driving in circles like an idiot. We readjusted it, so we're good from now on. Now, this is where the magic happened. So we, we pull up and we go over to a different brush pile. Um, so we started a brush pile, then we ran back across uh, the small, we, we fish a, a, a smaller lake that's, that's linked in to where we fish the tournaments. And we ran, it's a short jog across that lake. And we started fishing shallow, caught two. I caught a jack on a chatterbait. Uh, golden shiner chatterbait which almost gave me a heart attack because I'm tired of toothy critters stealing my stuff um, There's already two jackhammers in the bottom of that lake. I wasn't trying to add a third one in a month So we're working that um, there's lily pads. There's uh, Some just assorted grass and stuff like that in these canals uh, that we fish uh, I did really well 
couple weeks back in these canals and now you can pretty well tell the bigger fish have all pushed offshore. Um, so that brings me to that. So we, we left that dock and we said, you know what, let's go. There's two brush piles that are really close to each other. So I said, let's go to the other one and fish. It was kind of slow. We were throwing that swing head, Fur was throwing the ridge worm. And then he also grabbed a June bug, big dead ringer from Zoom. If you guys do any night fishing or any brush pile fishing, period, or offshore grass, try throwing that. Switch it up. I will switch it up and work it a little bit slower. I really like to throw my speed worms if I'm working grass lines, but I will tell you from, from, from past experiences, the dead ringer does work. It's gotta be the big dead ringer. And if you're in Florida, June bug. There ain't no other way around it. Just June bugs your color. Um, so we moved over to that second brush pile. We got nothing on soft plastics. Um, I didn't think we got a bite. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna throw a spinnerbait. I picked this spinnerbait up. This is a Booyah. It uh, has double Hildebrandt four and a half willow blades on it. Um, gold and silver. And then it's just a white chartreuse with a little bit of color in it. It is a three quarter ounce. This is a big boy. That's a big one right there. You can see, I mean, look my hand on that head right there. I am throwing this guys on the most unorthodox rod possible. I'm like I'm running out of rods. I didn't want to fish on a medium heavy. I might try it, but throwing a three quarter, fishing around brush and the size of fish that I know are there. I said, man, let me just grab this. Guys, this is a seven foot five heavy with 50 pound braid and a 300 series reel. Actually, I don't even know what they classified as. It's a Lose Super Duty GX. This is my frog rod, guys. <laughs> this is for slinging frogs into the nastiest stuff known to man and actually having a chance to get them back out. I don't know. I usually don't throw a lot of braid in open water, but here I am. So right as the sun set, it's about 8.30ish, somewhere around in there. I'm working it and I get it right back up to the boat. And as soon as the spinnerbait starts making the climb up, I just double over, just double over. Uh, that video will come out eventually. I'm a little behind on getting footage out, but just bear with me. Um, I thought the fish was way bigger than it was. When it hit, I don't know what it is, guys. Drop a comment below. Do you guys notice if you're fishing a spinnerbait, it just seems like they hit them way harder. I, I'm right. Mm -hmm. Cause it, and at the end of the night, I caught like a two pounder and a one and a half or something like that in that ballpark. And I'll tell you, they were working me like a six or seven pounder would work me. I, I personally haven't caught one on a spinnerbait, but I saw his rod just boom, boom, boom. boom. I mean, they hit it like a freight train. That fish weighed 4.1 or 4.31 pounds. Okay, so then fast forward, we run over and uh, we jog back over to the other brush pile. Now guys, we usually fish in order to run back because we have to idle all the way through and then run all the way back around the lake to get back to weigh in. We've been leaving at 9.15. Guys, at 9.15 on the dot, I caught, I, I missed one on live scope. I was watching it and I thought the fish had it. I felt him hit it and he must have short struck it and had to skirt or he hit the blade or something because I missed it. So I flipped back out and two more times of pitching back out and reeling it back in. I got nailed again. It was about a two pounder, give or take a few. And I was like, awesome. Now we still had, I called out one tiny fish. I said, we still have one. It's maybe a half a pound. Um, so I was like, man, I really would feel a lot better to go back to weigh in with another fish. And what did I, I, I said, I'll give it a couple more casts. Fast forward, it's 918. My hands are shaking. First, like getting nervous. He's getting the boat all put together. And I'm like, I, I just, I think I looked at you and said, this is for all the marbles. I'm throwing a Hail Mary, something along those lines. And I throw a long cast and I'm feeling, I feel what we're doing is bumping that spinnerbait off the brush. It's a dangerous game, but it's a game I'm going to try to play because it worked. Um, I get it and I bump the brush and I'm like, this stinks. And out in the retrieve, again, guys, it starts to come up towards the boat. And about that time, I'm straight down again. And I'll lay the hook into him. 
It's 9.18, guys, and I was on my last couple of cranks pulling that spinnerbait up in the boat. I was going to set the rod down, strap the rods down, and hit it. And I caught that last kicker, cold the little one, and literally I had just enough time to say something to the camera, and we were gone. Um, we ended up with... 7.97 pounds. We're 0.03 off of an eight pound bag. These are three fish limits on these tournament series, guys. Shotgun start, three fish limit, three and a half hour tournament. We launch at 6.30, we come back in and weigh in at 10. Um, yeah, and we ended up seventh um, out of uh, 26, 26 boats. Seventh out of 26. We were one spot out of the money, of course. Like, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. But... The first night we went out, we had a freak cold front, and that really shut the fish down, and we weighed in, I think we were 17th place there, out of 24, and then the week, at, uh, last week we finished 14th with on, only 3.03 pounds, it was an abysmal night for us, uh, just a couple of the things didn't work out, I lost, now if I wouldn't have lost that fish, we would have cashed a check for sure, um, but you know, that's behind us. And I'll tell you, I am going to pick up some more of these three quarter ounce Booyah spinner baits. We're going to try a couple combinations of blades, a couple combinations of colors. I'm going to pick up probably another rod like an idiot because I have like 50. So let's pick up one more. I'm going to put probably 18 pound Sunline FC Sniper on there. Uh, I just picked up a ton of it on, well, I bought two spools on accident because I don't pay attention and I'm too lazy to return things. I mean, you're going to use line no matter what, especially fluorocarbon. But uh, I'm going to switch over to fluoro and get a little bit smoother reel. This uh, this loose Super Duty, it, 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 um, it serves its purpose, but it's kind of big and clunky for what I'm doing. So it's it's whatever. I, I actually was going to use it as a swim bait rod or a reel, but I have a big single crank 300 with an 80 pound braid on that that I use. A little unorthodox. Most guys throw glides on like 20 or 25 pound fluoro. I get by with braid. I, I haven't had any issues with it. So, uh, but yeah, so I haven't got an update on points. Currently, we are 14th out of 26 spots uh, for the series. Now, there will be more boats added because there are quite a few guys that uh, hadn't fished other tournaments that are just starting to get into the series. So, I think we might be like 28 spots, or close to 30 or something like that. We were 14th, I think a top 10 finish. Uh, I really think we're gonna go see the top 10 now and now we really gotta uh, bury our noses and grind this one out and and start getting better seems to be that we're on bigger fish with the spinner bait so gonna take that into consideration like I said start playing with colors um, I'm gonna pick up and I'm gonna pray that they have black blue in this color and I'm gonna try to do black blue with two gold blades I don't know if you guys night fish and you guys use spinner baits, drop a comment below. Tell me what you're on. I'm sharing with you. How much you share back? Hook a brother up. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to win some money. I got to pay for this kid. I got to pay for that boat. I need some money. Help me. Help me. But anyways, guys, that was the sauce. I I don't throw spinner baits. Like, you can ask for I don't. And, like, in the last week, I just started throwing them. And I'll tell you, I'm going to have spinner bait in the boat no matter what. Because I've been throwing a Guggen Zinger, white chartreuse Guggen Zinger. Um, and I got on quite a few fish on a small little lake down in the villages, Florida. If you're familiar with Florida, you'll know right where the villages are. Uh, there's a small lake out there. It's a beautiful lake. I really enjoy it. You don't catch a ton of fish. Um, I haven't caught any big fish out there. But I have seen giants come out of there. Guy was using live bluegill about the size of my darn hand on a on a like a big Carolina rig. Basically, I had like a one ounce weight on that joker, and he he'd throw it way out on a drop off right by lily pads, and I'd smoke it. And that kid caught some giants down there, man. But I went out there to test. I, I just put Mega 360 on the boat. I'll probably cut a video just going over that. But I've had them bunch of problems. My Mega 360 transducer was bad right out of the box, so I had to get a replacement for that. Rolled up to the tournament last night, and I went to go flip the switch, and nothing happened, and I'm going, what the heck? I go to pull the plug out of my little panel up front, and only the plug came out. Somehow the wires come disconnected back there, and I just didn't want to bother with it. We were getting ready for the tournament, so that'll be fixed. Um, probably tomorrow night I'll, I'll get fixing that. 
uh, and get it ready. So we'll have Mega360, Live Scope, and then the last thing I want to add is another, uh, I'm going to add another Solix 12 to the console with the Mega Side image and uh, rock out with that and then my boat will be freshened all the way up. It'll be exactly where I want it to be. Next stop's going to be getting a wrap done and in the next, you know, probably year or two, I'm going to repower it. So if anybody out there in YouTube world has any lines and can hook a guy up with a good price on a Pro XS 150, hit me up. You guys can either drop a comment below uh, or uh, follow us on like Instagram or Facebook um, or even TikTok. It's CD2 Fishing across the board and shoot me a message. I'd like to talk business with you. Uh, but anyways, guys, anything you wanted to add, Fern? No, not that I can think of. No? All right, guys. Well, I think we're going to wrap this up, make it short and sweet. Again, guys, we caught them all on Junebug Red, pin quarter ounce speed worm, and then this big three quarter ounce of Booyah, double willow blade. Um, like I said, guys, we're going to switch it up, try a couple different spinner baits next week. Hopefully be in the money. You guys stay tuned. That series is going to kick off. We did not film the first night because it was freezing and I had so many layers on that I did not want to bother with a camera and I only caught one dink. If you feel like you want to see it, I believe I still have the clip on the computer. I may have even deleted it by now. I'm not sure. But anyways, guys, on behalf of myself, Chris, and Fer, we are CD2 Fishing. We appreciate you guys watching Tackle Talk Thursday. And real quick, guys, if you want awesome graphs, one of the best graphs in the market right now for mounting your electronics on your boat. Hit our link down below for straight up mounts. Click through our affiliate link. And I will also list a discount code. I can save you guys 10% on that. You help us out. You help a good company. Same thing goes for YOLO Tech, guys. Any camera accessories that you need, check out YOLO Tech. The link will be down below again. Again, it's our affiliate link. You're helping our veteran-owned company. You, if you guys have ever watched MLF or BASS, I'd say 98% of the camera mounts you see on those boats that are required by those two sanctioning bodies now, they're YOLO Tech, guys. So uh, again, uh, in that instance, you're helping a small channel out. You're helping two guys, father and son, get out fishing, and you're helping a great, amazing company. Uh, so anyways, guys, this is going to wrap it up. We appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to like, subscribe. Again, follow us on any social media, CD2 Fishing. And guys, I'm going to let the boss take it away. Mm -hmm. Like he said, make sure you follow us on all other social medias at CD2 Fishing. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye, guys.